So I, and, and everybody should understand, as Samson is sort of developing as a band and you're recording head on, at the same time, Iron Maiden is in parallel with you guys, right? Yep. Yep. So the famous Thunderburst controversy, oh. Thunderburst Gate, Thunder, as I like to call it, thunder. Maybe you want to. I know you've explained it to me in the past, but maybe you know you could explain it again for those folks. That's the one. There it is. That's there the I one. stand corrected. There it is. Yeah, it yeah, is very yeah. different, isn't it? Yeah. I, 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 I think I've read it before, but just for those oh, that don't man. know, what was the story there? When I was with um, Maiden, yes, we uh, uh, Steve was the first person to introduce to me um, rehearsals of just the rhythm section. Up until then, every band I'd been in used to rehearse as a band all the time. And yet, when I got with Maiden, Steve started rehearsing just the two of us to get everything right. you know, tight. Um, and Thunderburst was a, a, a drum rolling pattern that I came up with. He came to me with um, ideas for that song, and I would do this drum roll, drum drum pattern, as well as I threw in a couple of ideas. So when we, when I was with um, with Samson, we did the Head On album. We were still looking for a couple of other tracks to use. I said, well, there's a track that's an instrumental and played it to them. And they said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So we did it as an instrumental. And then... Uh, Clive Burr, who had also joined, joined, joined Maiden, because I mean, the, as you say, the connections between Samson and Maiden were like that. I mean, not, right. a, not only Clive Burr, ex Samson drummer joins Iron Maiden, but ex Samson singer joins Iron Maiden. I was asked back as well after, um, after uh, we finished the tour together. Um, and uh, so we did this instrumental. And Paul was still friends with Clive Burr. And Clive went over to Paul's house and Paul stopped and said, look, you know, we finished the album. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, great. So put the side one on. Wonderful. Everything was great. Side two, up comes Thunderburst. Hence, you know, because I took it to the band, that's why it was called Thunderburst. And Clive yeah. fell off his chair. <laughs> and he went, oh, my God, we're using that as an intro. And, and Paul went, what? What are you talking about? So he went in his bag and he pulled out a cassette and put a cassette on and there was I to march. Um, so as soon as this got heard uh, by the I Maiden camp, I was summoned to an e a meeting at EMI and Rod Smallwood was there and uh, Steve was there. A couple of the record company bots were there and a couple of the legal team from I Maiden. And I was told with no uncertainty Steve is going to take 50% of the songwriting royalties on Thunderburst. Um, and, and with Samson, we were a four-piece so, uh, songwriting team. We called ourselves Stab, which was Samson, Thunderstick, Aylmer, and Bruce. Uh, Stab. So we only got 12.5% each mm. from, from the, uh, the um, Thunderburst. Thunderburst, Thunderburst track. Thunderburst track, yeah, yeah. And Steve took fifty percent, and then he, then the the legal bod said, if you insist on trying to claim uh, songwriting credits on uh, Ides of March, we'll see you in court. And that was the that was the end of that. I mean, Paul, uh, the band, my, you know, Samson didn't want to know anything about it because it was something that had happened prior to me joining Samson. The management didn't want to know anything about it, so I was totally unrepresented by you know by anybody, and I went there to that meeting alone, and um, and the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> And who would have thought it would have worked out the way it worked out, right? Who yeah, would have yeah. thought Iron Maiden was the biggest band in the world, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we didn't know. So, but um, at the time, I mean, had I got songwriting on the Ides of March, it probably would have changed my life. But so, so was it during? And, and, but, but and do you? You mean you have twelve percent of it, don't you? Twelve and a half percent? No, not of Ides of March. No, Thunderburst. A, a Thunderburst only. Right. Interesting. So you got. So he took fifty percent of your song. Yep, but I wasn't. But, allowed you, didn't, to but, you, but you didn't. You didn't even get one percent of his song. Correct. Correct. And it's, no, the, and it's the same song. 
None of us did. None of us. But no, right. you know, that's why I was that's why I was called to the meeting and told that right. this is the case and that's the way it's gonna be. And do you consider that do you consider that song a co-write between you and Steve like a 50-50 kind of thing? Or was it totally your thing? Or you know, when you're putting no, the music no, no, in? no, never totally my thing. Um and Steve, if we broke it down, if we were to break the whole song down, Steve probably 75%, Barry 25% of that song. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, but, I mean, you know, it's many, many years and a lot of blood has passed under the bridge. <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, it's just a, another one of those stories and the, the fabled tales of Iron Maiden. <laughs> 